Welcome to the course. In this video I will explain how the blended learning course works. A blended learning course is a course that has both in-person and online elements. In this course only the online elements are compulsory but I try to make the in-person seminars worth your time and I recommend that you attend those as, as much as you can. The course is structured as eight units. Each unit follows a similar structure as is completely mostly completed mostly online. So when a unit starts, you will first get access to lecture videos that you're supposed to watch. These lecture videos also contain interactive tasks that you complete and that partially determines your grade. After watching the videos or while watching the videos, you can also start doing the written assignment for the unit that may be compulsory or optional. The written assignment also has some readings that you're supposed to read regardless of whether you do the assignment or not. And after reading the assignments and do, doing the videos for two or three days, the course discussion forum for the unit opens. So the idea is that you first read and do some self-studying, then we open the discussion forum. Whatever you did, questions you have about these materials, you can ask online. It is mandatory to ask at least one question give one comment about these, these materials or comment to somebody else's question. The detailed instructions on what you can do on the forum will be always posted when the forum opens. So the idea is that when a forum starts I will do the first post and then you follow. The forum will stay open for about a week after which you return the written assignment. So you have one week time of asking questions online typically it could be two weeks for some units, but mostly one week. After you return the written assignment and you get feedback, then it's time for the in-person seminar and a computer class. These seminars and a computer class together take about a day and they focus on, on discussing the materials instead of traditional lecture teaching. Then after the computer class, you have a few days to return a data analysis assignment if you do one, if one is a part of the unit and if, if it's optional or mandatory. Let's take a look at the video materials now because um, the video player and the interactive video may be something that you're not used to. The video player is shown here and uh, it has a couple of useful features. First of all, when you watch a video, if you miss something, then there's a button that allows you to skip back 10 seconds. If you click it multiple times, then you can skip back 20 or 30 seconds. So it allows you to go back a little bit if you missed something. Also, if you think that I speak uh, too slowly or I go too fast, you can adjust the playback speed here using this control. And finally, this control takes you to full screen. So you can uh, do this on your own pace. If you think I'm too slow, then you can run it at double speed. If you think I'm too fast, then you can slow down the speed to, uh, to half or even 0.25. I always review the videos at twice the, at the double speed and I find that uh, much better than my normal speed. But that of course depends on your own preferences. The videos also contain interactive elements. So whenever you see this kind of uh, icon and the video stops, that means that there's a task for you to do. These tasks are meant to keep you focused and get you to think about the question, about the issues that the video explains. So you get to apply what I just told you in the video. Uh, there are different kinds of questions. Most there are multiple choices, but there are also some open questions. Some questions require you to do a little bit of calculations to understand certain statistical concepts and so on. These tasks are indicated by circles here on the video timeline. If the circle is solid, that means that you have completed the task. If it's a uh, hollow, then that means that there's a task that you have yet to complete. Completing these tasks will be automatically graded. So there's also always one correct answer to these assignments and then you will be scored and that score partially influences your final grade for the course. Then we have the discussion forums. We have uh, about 10 discussion forums for the course and uh, this is uh, the reason why we have so many is that you get to choose what you participate. The 
Announcement forum is something that everybody is subscribed to and you cannot unsubscribe. So that is when I have something that I want to tell to everybody, I will post to the course announcements forum and that's uh, only I can, I can do postings there. So no student can post there. Then we have uh, the discussion forums for the units. So every unit has a discussion forum. Then um, the, the discussion forum opens a few days after the unit has started. And your task is to write something. So you have to post something to the forum to pass the unit. Then uh, everybody is automatically subscribed. But if you think that, uh, that you don't want to discuss uh, unit two uh, issues anymore, you can unsubscribe. The unsubscribe from a forum means that you will no longer get email alerts when someone posts to the, post to the forum. You can still view the forum on the website. You will just not get any notifications anymore. We have uh, quite a few people on the course, so the email volume can get a bit high at some points. So you may want to unsubscribe at some point. You can always resubscribe if you want to. Then we have general discussion forum. So this is a forum if you have any questions uh, that are not specific to any unit. For example, uh, you are considering which statistical software you want to use for a data analysis assignment. That kind of questions you can uh, ask here and everyone is allowed to comment. So uh, I, I think uh, using Stata is a good option for this course. Some students disagree and then we have that kind of discussions. There are always multiple perspectives uh, to, to uh, many issues that uh, you could consider. And this is a place for that kind of discussions. Then we have a special forum for data analysis assignments. And this forum is for questions about uh, technical issues in, in data analysis. So if you're doing a data analysis assignment that you get an error message from your statistical software, then uh, this is the place to post that question. By default, nobody is subscribed to the forum because usually these postings uh, that explain a data analysis problem are fairly specific to individual users. So for example, if you get uh, an error code, it's quite likely that no one else has gotten the same error code. So uh, only subscribe to this forum if you're interested in technical troubleshooting of your statistical analysis and uh, you can then unsubscribe. Of course, you can just, if you, if you want to read that kind of discussion to learn, you can do that, uh, subscribe to this right away. But I think this is uh, not something that most students uh, want to uh, be reading all the time. You can opt out from any forums. How you opt out and opt in is that uh, each forum has this, uh, this gear icon up here and then you can unsubscribe or subscribe to a forum. All the forums are, are subscribable except the announcements which is something that uh, you, you must be subscribed to when you're participating in the course because I need a way to contact everybody. So the subscription options are available here. Then there's also a Moodle level setting for getting emails as digests, which means that you only get one email per day, which lists all the activities that have been going on that day. So instead of getting every time an email every time when somebody posts this on the forum, you will get uh, an email containing posts for that day that you can read at the end of the day. So it's up to you how you want to do it. The course has some assignments and we have a plagiarism policy that is strictly enforced. Typically, you will need to read you. Many students will need to read you uh, work because of plagiarism. This is fairly strict and it's important that we are strict because uh, when you write research papers, if you plagiarize anything, then you will be get caught because journals use the same system that we do. And if you, are get, if you get caught copying somebody else's text, then your manuscript is going to be desk rejected uh, regardless of how good the actual research is. So you're wasting your time if you don't learn how to write in your own works. There are the assignments we have, the written assignments are about reading material, understanding the material and explaining how you understood the material. I'm not interested in uh, knowing whether you can find a, a certain quote from, a, from a materials or whether you can identify a section about, let's say, reliability in a material and then paraphrase that section. I'm on, I'm, I want you to know how you understood the material. So you read the material, you form an understanding, you put the material away, then you write your understanding to your document that you then submit. 
I will give you feedback. So everybody will get personal feedback and comments. So uh, take your time to do the assignment so you will get better feedback. If you spend uh, two hours doing an assignment that is supposed to take a day and a half, then probably there is not much for me to comment because either you have been uh, just paraphrasing and uh, then my comment is that you're paraphrasing. I cannot comment on your understanding or you just don't have the time to do it unless you paraphrase if you don't reserve at least a day for each assignment. The plagiarism policy, uh, we use Turnitin. I'll demonstrate the system on the next, next, page, next slide. And uh, when you credit sources, uh, you should be using American Psychological Association style for crediting sources or something very similar to that. The idea is that when you quote some, something, then you, you quote some marks, you add a citation and then you add uh, a page number after the, cita say after the quote. So can I, can I, I or any other of your readers can identify from where that quote came from. Any non-trivial violations of plagiarism policy will need to be read, uh, read on twice. So if you are getting, if you are caught plagiarizing something, then you need to resubmit that assignment twice. The, uh, the first version will be uh, one where you write the part that you copied in your own words. So how did you understand the part that you copied? And uh, the second part is that you uh, submit the original assignment and then you mark every copied part with quotation marks and then the appropriate citation to the source including the page number. So uh, both uh, quoting and explaining in your own words are useful skills in writing so we, we practice them if that's not uh, clear for you. If it's, uh, and you may need to redo this a couple of times un until you get it right. So this is, it's very important because uh, the main output of academic researchers is writing. So unless you can write in your own words or, and uh, use uh, sources appropriately, uh, you are not very far in the skill of becoming a good researcher. Let's take a look at the, uh, the feedback and the plagiarism detection system. When you submit something, it goes to turn it in. And uh, this is the submission inbox. This is my model answer and I have a similarity score of 32%. This actually percentage uh, is not something that I, I look at very strictly, but 30% copied text is, is a lot. So that indicates that there is a problem. It's not uh, solid evidence of a problem. I will show you what's solid evidence of a problem next. And, uh, but in any case, that if this percentage is high, if it's more than 10%, uh, then uh, if there's another good reason for it, then, then you could be in trouble. Of course, if you uh, submit an assignment that contains two pages of your own text, and then you give the assignment description on the first page, which you copy, that's completely okay, then you will get a, a, a similarity score of 32% because one of the three papers is copied. This pencil icon here, when it's blue, it means that there are comments available for you. When you click on that, you can access the instructor's comments. And uh, this is how the document looks like when you access the comments. So this is the Turnitin uh, student's user interface where you get to by clicking the pencil icon. We have text here and you can see that this text mark grid is, has been plagiarized. And uh, then there is uh, on the right hand side, there is a text field where I have given some comments on, for you. Then uh, there are also uh, other kinds of comments that I'll show on the next slide. But this is like a, a general explanation of why I liked your assignment, why I didn't, or what kind of problems you have, or why you failed. So this is plagiarism and it's directly copied from the book. The assignment was to uh, explain what is reliability and this is directly copied from Singleton and Straits. You will get caught doing that and uh, you're going to be failed. Then you have to redo. This is not technically plagiarism. So you can quote an explanation from a book, but this will still be either failed on one point because you are not really explaining how you understood the concept of reliability. You are just copying text from the book. So this is not answering the question. This is uh, slightly better, but not by much. This will, uh, paraphrasing will not fail you. So uh, if you paraphrase, you'll just get a really bad grade. So this would be one point out of five. And paraphrasing means that you, you are not copying directly, but instead you, you take the text from the book and then you just write over it the same, same text using your own words. So you can see that there is a stability and consistency here. We are stability and consistency here. And then uh, 
it's basically the same explanation, right? Some, somewhat in somewhat different words. Instead of paraphrasing or telling me what the book says, tell me how you understood the concept instead. So these are all three are bad answers. Now let's take a look at what our two good answers look like. So uh, these two answers are, are good. So uh, the, this is an answer that I just wrote how I, un how I understand the concept of reliability without looking at any references. So this will get you uh, three or four points. So it's, it's either average or above average, depending on how well you explain it. And uh, to get five points, you have to explain and you have to do reflection. So this is an explanation of, with reflection. So what's the difference between this uh, answer and the previous answer is that the previous answer only explains how you understand reliability without using the sources. This uh, explanation here uses two sources. So the explanation has uh, something about singleton traits. Singleton traits note that reliability uh, is a prerequisite for validity. And then there is a, 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 a citation to, or, or you say that in, my, in, in the videos that you watched, uh, I disagree. So I don't think that you need uh, reliability for validity. Then uh, what's your take on it? So there is, con there is uh, contradiction within the materials. And then, then you explain, OK, so how do you uh, interpret the contradiction? There are lots of contradictions in materials. So uh, there are some issues where there are multiple sides. And there can be two sides that both are generally correct in a different way. And there are all sometimes uh, mistakes in the material. So when you, when you really uh, give a thoughtful answer where you reflect your understanding against the materials or you reflect under your, your understanding against the current research practice, then that gets, gets you five points. This screen also demonstrates uh, the, the comments that I give you. So I can give you, besides this, uh, one overall set of comments. I can give you specific comments for specific parts. And uh, these labels here simply are marking that you did that part correctly. And uh, here I have highlighted one part with yellow. I know that it's a good observation with that kind of tag. And the speech bubble here indicates that when you click on it, you will get a, a more detailed explanation of why I think this is a very good observation to do. So that's. Uh, that's what you get on uh, the feedback that you get. Typically, when you submit a written assignment, then uh, I grade them the next day and I will try to have the comments available for you before the in-person seminar. So if, you, uh, if the in-person seminar is on Wednesday, then if you submit on Monday night, my grading day on Tuesday is on Tuesday. So you can read the comments either on the break of the seminar or in the morning before the seminar or late Tuesday night. So I try to give you feedback. If you don't stick to my schedule, then uh, you will not get a timely feedback. If you don't uh, submit by my grading day, then that when I will grade you next time could be my next grading day or the day after, depending on uh, how busy I am on the grading day. Because I always prioritize those students that submit on time. The in-person seminars. The uh, in-person seminars differ a bit from normal lectures. So normally in a lecture, the lecturer comes in with a, a set of slides and it's mostly the lecturer who speaks. In this course, I try to get the students to speak as much as possible. I do have the slides for the unit with me so we can go through some of the parts that you found difficult to understand. I also have some additional slides that demonstrate concepts using uh, in an in-class assignment. So we can do uh, all kinds of uh, tests of whether you fall into some of the traps of, of how, for example, p-values are commonly misunderstood. But it most, the idea is that when you watch the lectures in advance, we have more time for questions, we have more time for discussion, we have more time for reflection. These seminars are structured in a way that I have a schedule that we can follow. So if you have no questions, then we follow my schedule. Uh, using the assignments that I have prepared. If you have lots of questions, then we'll let your questions drive the session. Because the questions that you have are probably more important for you than the assignments that I have prepared. Also, when we have the, the forum discussions, then sometimes the forum discussion uh, tends to uh, get complicated. Then I may say, that, OK, let's, let's continue this discussion in the in-person seminar. So the forums are kind of like, um, a lead in to the in-person seminars.
we start discussing in the forums and then we conclude in the in-person seminar. The seminars are graded also like everything in this course is graded so we have low stakes grading there are more than 100 grade elements and then a weighted average will be your final grade. When you come to that seminar you get a grade of two. If you open your mouth once to say something or comment something then you get a three and if you participate the discussion actively you get a grade of four or five. By actively I, I mean on not only quantity of comments but also quality of comments. So if you just uh, ask a lot of uh, stupid questions all the time then I will ask you to be uh, give please give some other people time to speak but if you have a very uh, high quality very thoughtful questions and comments then you can get a five even if you're not the most uh, the person who is most uh, using their voice. Credits and grading the uh, exact way you get credits depends on the university and uh, that's explained on the forum. The amount of credits for this course varies between three and six. You have uh, mandatory parts when you complete all mandatory parts then you will get uh, uh, three credits. Mandatory parts include the pre-exam, the video lectures, reading and written assignments one, five and seven, data analysis assignment one and learning diary. The learning diary is something that you, should, you can work either during the course or after the course. It contains about 20 questions and those 20 questions are there to help you to check if you have understood the content of the course. So for each question it's like a small essay so you answer one or two paragraphs and uh, then the entire learning diary could be uh, 10, 12 pages long and then you submit at the end of the course and then I will check if you have understood the course concepts correctly. So that's uh, that's the mandatory part. Then uh, the optional part I have written readings and written materials for you. I have four additional things that you can do and then I have two data analysis assignments that are optional that you can do. These uh, give you half a credit each and uh, then the number of credits will be rounded down. So if you have, uh, if you complete uh, five out of these six uh, voluntary things, you will get uh, five credits. If you complete all six, then you'll get a, a six credit. Then we have a computer sessions. These are not graded. So computer sessions are something where you just come in and you work on the data analysis as assignment. You ask questions. You can of course come in and ask questions about other course things as well. So I'll be there. There is no uh, structured content except for a couple of, of, of small things in the very beginning to get you started. It's more like a place for you to work and ask questions. All the assignments are instructed by using screencast. So you can have take the screencast that explains how to do the analysis. When you have problem then you raise hand uh, and then I will come and, and help you in the computer class. The course has completion tracking. So um, whenever you are working on a unit you see these boxes here. So the box is something that receives a check once you have completed the assignment. For example in the unit discussion forums when you have posted something to the forum then that forum will be checked for you. The overall completion is tracked here and uh, this is initially blue. If you are late in doing some of the mandatory parts it turns red. Once you complete a mandatory part it turns green or when you complete anything it turns green. So uh, green ideally is when uh, the course is done in a couple of months then this bar should be all green for you. The workload for the course is uh, a bit non-ideal so this is a uh, a not good investment for credits. Uh, if you do it all, the six credit version, you are going to be uh, working about 300 hours. So this is calculated based on a model that's used in Finnish universities. So that's the amount of work. In practice, uh, in the past when I have given this course as a traditional course without the online elements, the students who have completed the full six credit versions, uh, they typically say that it takes about two days per week to do the course for the duration of the course. Of course if you don't do all the assignments then it takes less but it reserve at least one day per week for the course and uh, otherwise you're going to be in, in a hurry and then you'll fall behind and then it's, it's going to be difficult to follow the discussions online and in the, in the seminars. Your grade is going to be weighted average of these different elements 
the pre-exam is 10 percent, assignments is 40 percent, participation is 30 percent, including online participation, the videos and the seminars, and then learning diary is 20 percent. So the, the, uh, the pre-exam is not uh, weighted heavily because the idea is that I would just want to have everyone to start on the same level roughly because there's, there's very uh, large variation in your backgrounds when you come to the course. The grades, uh, you can follow how you're doing on the course uh, by using the gradebook. So the link to gradebook is up here and then you get a list of your grades. For every grade, grade item you get a long list, then there is uh, the grade. This is now empty because this is a new course instance and uh, some of these grade items have links. For example, uh, introduction to quantitative research video. If, when you click on that link, then it'll take you to a detailed explanation of what the questions were, which ones you got correct and which ones you did not. So you can see uh, how exact, where exactly the grade comes from. And that's a pretty nice feature. All the course materials uh, are distributed using the Zotero reference management system. And this is uh, mostly a, a choice of convenience for me because this is my main way of keeping track of my literature. This is the, the citation management software that I use. You may use something else and it's a matter of personal preference which one you want to use. The idea of, of this I, um, software is that uh, once you sign up for the course you send me the, the user account that you have then I invite you <coughs> to the library and you can either access the library by using the online user interface using your web browser or you can install the Zotero software. Then uh, you can search for materials using the search bar here or the search bar here. The advantage of using the client software is that uh, it's a bit faster to use than the website. Also you get all the PDFs on your own computer so you can access them uh, when you travel. And uh, I, I just find it more pleasant to use than, than the online version. Of course if you don't want to install the software on your computer then uh, you can use the web website instead. When you install the Zotero software then you have to configure it to synchronize with the online library and the way to do that is that uh, you access the settings of the software and there is a uh, synchronization settings. You enter your username here and then uh, it'll synchronize automatically. So if it doesn't synchronize, there's the synchronization arrow here. When you cl click this button, then uh, you will get it to synchronize. So synchronization gets all the readings to your computer so you can work offline, make notes to those, and then the notes will stay in your version. So it's just the one way read-only synchronization. 